for the plastic limit. So for the plastic limit, we use the data from the rolling and crumble test. So from for the plastic limit, we have this data, data from the rolling and crumble. As you can see here, we have two container, All right? We the mass of the container uh, for each container and the wet mass of the container with the wet soil and also with the dry soil. So uh, from this data, we need to add another rows to get the mass of the wet soil, dry soil, mass of water and at the end, we need to determine the moisture content. So how to get the mass of the wet soil is actually similar exactly uh, as we do in the liquid limit. So simply by uh, the mass of container plus wet soil, all right, minus with the mass of container. So we can get the mass of the wet soil. And also for the mass of dry soil and then mass of water that we can get from the uh, wet soil minus with the dry soil. So we can get the mass of water. And then at the end, we need to determine the moisture content. All right, we use the same equation for the moisture content, the mass of water divided by mass of the dry soil, and don't forget to times with 100 since we want the data in the percentage. All right, so we need to complete all the information based on the data given. And then how to get the plastic limit? All right, so the determinations of the plastic limit is actually based on the average of the moisture content. So in this case, we have two moisture content. So meaning that we have average for W1 for the moisture content 1, W2 for the moisture content 2 divided by 2. Let's say if you have three data recorded for the moisture content, so you need to consider the W3. And also, if you have the W4, so we need to consider the average for the four moisture content. So for this example, all right, so once you calculate the average value, you need to express the value to the nearest whole number. So in this example, we have 15%. All right, so that is the plastic limit. So that's how we get the plastic limit.